Fram sleaze me. Sleaze you? How about the Golden Globes? Viewership up 50%. Wow. After a uh, jump to CBS, 9.4 million. That's an increase again of 50%. It was on NBC last year. Good for CBS. I'm sure they are thrilled. Kind of car crash mentality because it got around very quickly on social media, maybe by design, that Joe Coy was awful as a host and everyone tuned in. I have to say that uh, I was very happy. As you know, that best director went to Christopher Nolan because I love the movie Oppenheimer, but I have an update for you. Oh, what? Remember when Christopher Nolan was doing his Peloton and doing his activity and getting some exercise and the instructor just went after him over his movie Tenet? Let's revisit that. Did anybody see this besides me? Because I need a manual. Someone's got to explain this. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Do you understand? Seriously, you need to be a neuroscientist to understand. And that's two and a half hours of my life that I want back. (laughs) So she's now, her name is Jen. So funny. Jen Sherman. She is uh, now a very famous Peloton instructor. Her name is out there. She's trying to make amends for uh, dissing Tenet and Christopher Nolan. Um, In a workout video that he was attending, she is now inviting him to take one of her classes. Check this out. Listen, it was 2020. It was a dark time. I'm up on the platform teaching my little class, and I'm running my mouth off like I'm known to do, and I make a random comment about a movie I had seen the night before. What do you think the odds are that the director of said movie would take that ride some four years later? Yeah, that would only happen to me. So here's what I want to say. I may not have understood a minute of what the hell was going on in Tenet. That went right over my head. But I have seen Oppenheimer twice, and that's six hours of my life that I don't ever want to give back. So, Mr. Nolan, I'm inviting you to come take a ride with me in the Peloton studio. You can critique my class. We'll have a great time. You'll sit in the front row, and I promise you, it'll be insult-free. Let me know. Take me up on it. Okay, now it makes sense. So he watched it four years later. I wondered why that made news. I I did, too, and I have to say, I'm not sure she really sat down and watched Oppenheimer twice, but that's just my opinion. She would still be there if that's what she did. But yeah, my second prediction or my prediction about this story is now how many of these teachers are going to try and take their shot. Hey, it's already been done. Now everyone's going to start, you know, critiquing movies, do a movie review within the Peloton class. You know it's coming. It is definitely coming. Barnes, one story that we did not get to about the Golden Globes the other night was that really awkward moment. There were many on stage with Kevin Costner. Oh, yeah. And Barbie's America Fiera. Now, you remember, he didn't go last year, but he showed up this year, looked very handsome on the red carpet, and he was announced as they, they actually, his introduction was about Horizon, his upcoming film, you know, that he's the star, director, executive producer. Yeah. No mention of Yellowstone. But it looked like he wasn't, he was trying to read the cue cards that he had never looked at them. Because, you know, you can look at them backstage before you make it onto the stage. You can do a little prep. Ah, This was so awkward. I have that from the other day. Did you feel it like I felt it? It was, it was bizarre. Either it's a bit gone awry or it is a serious illness that someone should look into. And I'm not joking. (laughs) I mean... Seriously, it, it it seemed very out of sorts, and, and he stayed with it. He stayed with it, yeah. Listen to this clip, and, you know, you, you tell us. It, it just gets weirder and weirder. Well, there's a, well you know, you have a scene uh, that, that I really love. I think a lot of people really love that scene. Uh, really? Which, yeah. Which the, scene the, is that? The Barbie thing, the Barbie movie, you know, where it's literally <laughs> impossible to be a woman. You know that? You're so beautiful, you're so smart, and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough. That was pretty good. <laughs> did, did you, Kevin Costner, memorize my monologue about womanhood from, from Barbie? No. <laughs> okay. But, but, you know, but it's an important message, uh-huh. really. I mean, and, it, and it always serves to remind me uh, what's possible in film. Um, you know, it just reminds me that when we take our time, uh-huh. we, when we manage to get it right, when film is working at its very best, it can be about moments you never ever forget. A look, a touch, you know, a kiss, a speech, and you just had one of those moments, so. Uh, 
I don't even think the room knew what to do with that. I didn't know what was going on there. Very weird. Um, you didn't tell me that you were a guinea pig for the Golden Globes swag bag. What do you mean? Did you see what was inside the Golden Globes gift bag? No. First of all, valued at over $500,000. Half a million dollars. So winners got these. Yes. Half a million dollars. And I'm looking here and it says huge ticket items. Five-day luxury yacht car- uh, charter in Indonesia. Exclusive trips to the Cayman Islands, New Zealand, and Punta Mita. Oh, Four Seasons. Where you just were in yeah. Naviva. Oh, that was in the gift bag? That was in the gift bag, and I'm looking here. The, it almost looks like the exact photo that you sent me where you just were. Oh, nice. And I was like, wait, did Bar- was Barnes like a recipient here? Was he like a guinea pig? They felt bad I wasn't going to get a Golden Globe, so they just sent me ahead of time. But no, that... They're gonna, man. Those people are gonna love it. The winners. Can you imagine being there when all that, all those people are starting to show up? Wow. A, a yeah. 99x advertiser right there. Four seasons. Naviva. Sweet. Half a million bucks. Have an update for you. Uh, Nigel Lithgow is now stepping down Ooh. as a judge on So You Think You Can Dance after two lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault. You know he's the executive producer of the show, uh, accused of groping and forcibly kissing Paula Abdul in an elevator about 20 years ago. But then this second lawsuit came up, two contestants on All-American Girl accusing him of forcibly trying to kiss them after a rap party in 2003. Quote, I have informed the producers of So You Think You Can Dance of my decision to step back from participating in this year's show. I did so with a heavy heart. Man, tight. That does not sound good. You kind of also start to wonder, like, you know, what's going to happen next, right? Well, he, he sure jumped out of the pool quickly. You know what I mean? Usually they fight it a little more. Yes, so, I agree. Pretty fast. Lisa Bonet ready to finally end her relationship with Jason Momoa officially. She just filed for divorce according to new court documents obtained by TMZ. Uh, a disillusion of the marriage, but this is like two years after they announced that they were splitting. This is happening a lot in Hollywood where people sort of draw things out, but yeah, a couple of years. Is it a financial play when that happens, or is it just... No, on the money front, um, she's not asking for spousal support at all. Oh, good. I mean, they have, you know, obviously they have two children together. Good for him, because man, the California math is tough. Very sad story, uh, the continuing story of Mary Lou Retton sharing news of her recent health scare. Remember, she fought a rare form of pneumonia last year. And then, of course, she went on uh, one of those spot funds to cover her medical bills. She didn't have insurance, raising over $450,000. Now she just talked to uh, Hoda on the Today Show to share part of her story. This is serious, and this is life. And I am so grateful to be here. Mm. I am blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. Because there was a time when they were about to put me on the life support. Man, that and she had the oxygen hooked up to her. It's very sad, sad story. It really is. We wish her well, Mary Lou Retton. We talked about how in the ratings, the uh, Golden Globes doubled on CBS, doubled the viewership. Good for them. But I did not realize until the Golden Globes that there's a new couple alert. Who? Ali Wong from Beef, who, you know, she won. Yep. Best actress, and you saw Beef. Ali Wong and her fellow actor, Bill Hader. Sharing a kiss at the Golden Globes. Oh. The couple rumored to have been dating for months were spotted out and about holding hands in L.A. Good for them. Still mopping up some Golden Globe sleaze. It's nice to... <laughs> but that ratings thing, the way they doubled, I mean, that is the train wreck effect a little bit. Because now you have social media to really drive that viewership in real time as that thing was unfolding and getting bashed. It ended up being a great thing for CBS. It really did. And, of course, all the gossip about... Uh, what was Selena Gomez and Taylor Swift talking about? I mean, that was so high school, and yeah. every single entertainment publication picked it up. Leave them alone. Low-hanging fruit. It was great to see Jodie Foster, but uh, if anyone knows what it's like to be a young star, she does. Have you seen uh, her coming out talking about Gen Z? Dumping on them. Seriously dumping on them. They're really annoying, quote, especially in the workplace, Gen Z. They're like... Yeah, no, I'm not feeling it today. I'm going to come in at 1030. (laughs) She did offer some encouragement. They need to learn how to relax, how to not think about it so much, how to come up with something that's theirs. I mean, 
Take some advice from Jodie Foster. That truth cuts deep. Yeah, she was also talking about misspelled words, and they didn't think that was important. But that, that says a lot about her work ethic, which I love. I mean, she's, she's calling, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, Tiger Woods' historic partnership with Nike is over. That surprised me, and I wonder if there's something more to that story, because he was pretty much a lifer. I mean, that guy was... 27 years, Barnes. Yeah. Do you think that means he might be uh, announcing another partnership? Could be, but I mean, he's twilighting, right, in his career, but still, he's so associated with Nike, it would be really hard to shift this late in the game and Mm -hmm. and have it matter, because you're always going to look at Tiger and think of the swoosh. That's what you're always going to think of. He made the announcement on X, which I thought was interesting, thanking Phil Knight, reminiscing on the amazing moments and memories. We'll keep following that story. Who knew? Maynard James Keenan Tool is a black belt in jiu-jitsu after decades of training. I believe it. I mean, if you're in Tool and now you're a black belt, what does that say? They were congratulating him. Uh, Wasn't it also, I have to go back and do some research, that he was also, he had a winery or something? Very interesting guy, Maynard James Keenan, but now a black belt. Talk about all over the board. I didn't know it took decades. I don't know anything about karate, but that it took decades to become a black belt. I don't know if that's normal or not. Or maybe he was just, uh, you know, training during uh, tours. Who knows? Yeah, maybe he was just, you know, taking a part-time online course. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Very funny. Uh, News for Samuel L. Jackson, one of my favorite actors, joining the cast of Peacock's Flight Night, The Million Dollar Heist. Looks like something right up your alley. It's a limited series based on the podcast of the same name. How about all these podcasts becoming limited series? What about the Morning X podcast? Well, you can just keep waiting for that. But I feel like putting him in that just makes me think of what? Snakes on a plane. Well, it's centered around the after party the night Muhammad Ali defeated Jerry Quarry, during which guests were robbed at gunpoint. Oh, I thought it was about a plane. No, Million Dollar Heist. Oh, Heist, my bad. I don't know why I was thinking plane. You were thinking snakes on a plane? When you said that, (laughs) I thought it was a a movie about a plane, but I'm thinking also of that Kevin Hart Netflix thing that I'm seeing. I'm all confused. That's okay. I mean, I'm here for you. You're here. Um, Young actor Jacob Elordi, who you're seeing a lot of, will take Andrew Garfield's place in the Guillermo del Toro Frankenstein adaptation on Netflix. That's going to be big. Christopher Waltz is also in it. Uh, Andrew was supposed to play the role, but now it's going to be Jacob Elordi. You've seen him. You know, he was the one that was in Elvis, the Elvis movie, Sofia Coppola's Priscilla. He also starred in Saltburn. I have yet to see that. So much talk about it. It's just another, like, dirty... Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch Euphoria on HBO? He was in that as well. Right. And it's in Saltburn. He was in Saltburn and Euphoria? <laughs> Come on. Okay. There's a theme going there. A former employee of the One Hotel West Hollywood went on TikTok to claim that Brittany Mahomes, of course, wife of Patrick Mahomes, refused to leave a tip after dining at the hotel. Now, the server alleges that Brittany and her group had a bill of about 130 bucks and that no one received a gratuity from her during their stay. I would often say that TikTokers, you know, they're on the very bottom of the credibility list, right? I mean, come on. Sometimes. This, in the beginning of this clip, you, you kind of go, yeah, here we go, another TikToker. But then. But I believe this girl. I, she's, what you she's. You be the judge, right? You be the judge, but, you know, sometimes you just feel it inside, right? And I feel like I believe her. I worked at the One Hotel West Hollywood. I was a server, barista, bartender. I did every position. And I believe Brittany was in town to shop for her wedding dress. And my first interaction with her, she ran up over a hundred dollar tab. She was with her whole posse. Uh, Patrick was not there, but I believe their tab was well over a hundred dollars, maybe like a hundred thirty zero dollar tip. And that happens sometimes. So I was willing to let the first one slide. And I'm like, maybe she just didn't like me. Maybe it was something I said. Um, but they were there for almost a week, I think, and did not tip a single one of our staff. And not only did she not tip, she was just genuinely unpleasant. And I totally understand celebrities don't owe you anything, especially when you're out in public. As a public figure, You should always go out thinking, okay, the people I interact with are clocking these interactions and they're going to remember this. And I will always remember that, Brittany. See, I believe her. And one thing I have to say, she's a hard worker. 
And I wonder if if maybe uh, she thought that someone else was leaving a tip just to give her the uh, mm. Brittany. Well, the benefit of the doubt, no? As the as the public judge of this clip, I would say, well, she just <laughs> said that they were there over a week and no staff members received the tip. That's not good. And if you look at her behavior, Mahomes, and that whole little circus that travels with her, minus Taylor Swift, I'm sure she tips, it, it doesn't seem like a stretch. That's all. That's how I interpret it. That's just my... I will say the girl sounded believable. She totally sounds believable. But that shame on you if that's true. Come on. Yeah. Especially if you're someone with that kind of jack. Leave a tip, idiot. Is that my celebrity sleaze? No. Keep going. Oh, okay, Don't good, stop. Good. Well, I wanted to bring this story up because the uh, Patriots owner, Robert Kraft, threw his wife, Dana Bloomberg, a little surprise 50th birth party, uh, birthday party at the Apollo Theater. Guess who he hired for the party? Mm, who, a band? Dave Matthews. <laughs> oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. He kept it for a surprise for over five months, uh, lining up about 200 friends. How do you keep that a surprise? I don't know, because if you work at Dave Matthews Bank, you probably saw a pretty big transaction come through. <sighs> Kraft is on the board of the Apollo, which is now being renovated and restored to become the Apollo Performing Arts Center. I have been to the Apollo. It is majestic. You're an insider, Fran. What would it cost to hire Dave Matthews to play your birthday? It's got to be a million or more. Yeah. It's got to be. Yes. I thought that was huge. You never mentioned, because I know you're a Suits fan, that reunion at the Golden Globes with uh, Patrick J. Adams, Gabriel Mack, Sarah Rafferty, Gina Torres. Coming out, kind of a surprise. Well, maybe not a surprise, but uh, they came out on the Golden Globes to present, but no Meghan Markle. Well, that's too bad the show didn't have the same take and no Meghan Markle. It would have been a much better show. I bet. Well, reps are saying her reps, Meghan's reps. Unfortunately, she had a previous commitment But she's not in their Suits group chat. They just don't have her phone number. Yeah, she's too cool. I'm I'm kind of guessing they don't like her, maybe? I don't know. She wasn't the best part of Suits. She just wasn't. And I love that show. Have you watched uh, May, December on Netflix? I've. You know what? That's one of the ones that as I go, because it's still in that first row of, you know, poster art, I go to it and I never hit play and I I stop. (laughs) <laughs> and I think about it, and then I just keep going on. I did finish, though, however, Love is Blind. You finished Love is Blind. Yeah. But you have not finished uh, Fool Me Once that you turned me on to. I've got two more to go. And everyone listening, if you haven't gone to Fool Me Once, this is such a great binger. So good. Fram did it in one day. After your recommendation. That's eight hours of television you did in one day. It was the holidays. <laughs>